Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, we are presented with the blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We are continuing with our series on living in hope. And today, I want to talk about the need to get your fight back. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 4. We are reading from verse 1 to 5 and then 12 to 21. But it so happened when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of uh, rubbish? stones that are burned now tobiah the ammonite was beside him and he said whatever they build if even a fox goes up on it he will break down their stone wall hear O our god for we are despised for we are despised turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity do, do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you for they have provoked you to anger before uh, the builders so it was when the jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore, I position men behind the lower part, the lower part of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought the applaud to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that, from that time on that half of my servants worked at, construct, at construction while the other half held their spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand, uh, and, and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword guided had his sword, his, his sword guided at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside them. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work. And half of the men held their spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. Let's look at uh, chapter uh, verse 1. Verse 1 of chapter 4. Verse 1. It says, But it so happened when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the walls, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the jews the enemy gets angry listen to me the enemy gets angry the moment you make a decision to talk about rebuilding your life the enemy will mock you when you attempt to 
move forward to take a stand to rebuild your life verse 2 and he spoke before his brethren and the army of samaria and said what are these feeble jews doing will they fortify themselves will they offer sacrifices will they complete it in a day will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish stones that are burned if your life is bent and damaged and you are under heaps of rubble there's still hope for you but the enemy will come and say will they and you've got to learn how to take a stand and fight back verse 3 says now tobiah the ammonite was beside him and he said whatever they build if even a fox goes up on it it will break down their stone wall in other words you are so pathetic in trying to rebuild your life any little temptation or evil and you all fall apart verse 6 so we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to have its height for the people had a mind to work the people had a mind to work god does nothing apart from your work god does nothing apart from your work verse 12 so it was when the jews who dwelt near them came that they told us 10 times they told us 10 times from whatever place you turn they will be upon us from wherever or whatever place you turn they'll be upon us how, how many of you have had people come uh and tell you things 10 times over it's like CNN or Sky News. You know, they repeat stuff over from morning, over and over again. You feel like telling them enough of that negative stuff 10 times over. The enemy knows that if he just keeps uh, hammering away, he's going to take you down. You don't want to fight anymore or you wouldn't want to fight anymore. Verse 13, therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings and uh, i said the people according to their families with their swords their spears and their bows i like that word positioned there are lower places in your life and if you don't stand guard over those areas the enemy will come through them and attack you you have to make a decision that i'm taking a stand and I'm fighting back. You, you, you will, you will help. I mean, I mean, God will help you. God will help you, and you, you can restore those broken down areas, and you can build the wall of your life. He positioned them there by families, because if you're alone, you will struggle. If you're alone, you will struggle. Look at verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon so with one hand worked at construction and with the other held a weapon you can't just go to work and give yourself to work without having a spiritual component you've got to have the weapon of the word in one hand the enemy will defeat you if you try and work without holding on to the word of God and without being in the family of God. Verse 18. Every one of the builders had his sword guarded at his side as he built. And uh, the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Trumpet here speaks of preaching. Preaching. So verse 19 and 20 verse 19 and 20 then i said to the nobles the rulers and the rest of the people the work is great and extensive and we are separated far from one another on the wall wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there our god uh, will fight uh, for us wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us our god will fight for us 
when you are scattered in your work your school university or whatever you find uh, or wherever not whatever wherever you find yourself you need to hear the preaching of the word of god and it pulls you together and fills you with hope then you can take a stand and fight back but if you are on your own spread out giving your all to work you are going to be depleted and those low places and exposed places are going to be overrun by the enemy okay before we read verse 21 it says our god will fight for us the verse 20 says our god will fight for us god will fight for you when you fight for yourself god will fight for you when you fight for yourself verse 21 so we labored in the work and half of the men held their spears from daybreak until the stars appeared until the stars appeared if you are going to fight you have to give it your all i want to fight but i prayed for 15 minutes and i stopped no sweetheart you have to be there from daybreak until the stars appear you've got to fight for your health you've got to fight for your finances you've got to fight for your relationships you've got to fight for your community you've got to fight for your church you've got to fight for your sanity you've got to resist sin and and habits that will pull you down it, it doesn't just happen christianity is not to lie on your back and the lord will do it get yourself equipped get together with other people position yourself take a stand and fight and watch what god will do on your behalf what we do not fight for we will lose what we do not fight for we will lose if you find yourself in a situation that you find is precarious or is in jeopardy and you say i wonder what the lord is going to do if you don't fight you lose it you have to look at that situation and fight for it and you need to take a stand emotionally and mentally then you can live in the expectation of good but if you don't take a stand and fight you can't expect anything good to come your way during world war ii hitler intimidated the nations around him he went and invaded nations and some of them just put down their weapons others he had to conquer but winston churchill was a great leader and he refused to lie down and die he and the english people took a stand and fought remember america came into the war very late it was only after they bomb uh, they bombed uh pearl harbor it was after they bombed pearl harbor america didn't stand with england england had to stand on its own and remember that great speech by winston churchill he said we shall go on to the end we shall go on to the end we shall fight in france we shall fight on the seas and on the oceans we'll fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air we shall defend our island whatever the cost may be we shall fight on 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 the landing and on, on and on grounds we shall fight in the field and streets we shall fight in the hills we shall never surrender and guess what england eventually overcame and the nation wasn't defeated and what you fight for you can win but what you don't fight for you will lose four things you need to do four things you need to do the first one is you've got to fight against doubt criticism and exaggeration because if you want to live in the expectation of good and you want to believe for better things doubt criticism and the exaggeration of the problem are going to be things that you have to deal with and you have to learn how to say i don't care what you say i'm hearing these things but i'm not going to pay attention i'm going to overcome and Nehemiah and the builders on the wall face three aspects of this doubt criticism and exaggeration so let's deal with the first one doubt there was anger and there was ridicule sambalat and tobiah ridiculed and spoke against them and created doubt in their minds as to whether they were able to do it 
Whenever you want to start building your life, there are going to be people near you who are going to cast doubt. Ridicule. You have to take a stand and fight and expect good to come into your life. You are not going to start and, and collapse. You need to take a stand because the enemy will bring fear. Fear will paralyze you. You'll not be able to move forward and you'll not be able to fight. William Shakespeare said, extreme fear can neither fight or fly. Extreme fear can neither fight or fly. Sometimes the scorn of your friends and the ridicule that comes your way can just paralyze you and you can't move forward and you can't fight back. Sometimes it's the opinions of important people. Sambalat was a government official and he must have spoken with some expertise and some authority and his friend Tobiah was very wealthy he must have come across as this rich man who knows a lot listen you need to push the people or you need to push people like that like that aside you need to push people like that aside and in their opinion you need to say i don't care how clever you are i'm taking a stand and i'm going to fight the next one is criticism they said will they anytime you want to take a step forward and believe god for better things in your life the enemy will tell you will they in other words your passion or your desire will be questioned you have to fight back i believe i can and i will verse 2 of Nehemiah chapter 4 says will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish stones that are burned sometimes your life can be filled with heaps of rubbish but it doesn't matter how high the heaps are the lord sees through the heaps and he sees your potential the next one is exaggeration they said these stones are bent stones and whatever they are building if a fox goes up on it they will collapse what they are saying is you don't stand a chance don't even bother look how you've lived you are a mess You've gone from relationship to relationship. How many partners have you had? Go away. You need to take a stand. I don't care what you say. Doubt, criticism, the exaggerating. I can, God can. Often when you want to move forward or you want to take a stand, the enemy wants, to be, uh, uh, wants you to be reduced to average. The enemy wants you to be reduced to average. Average people give in. Average people accept anything or any service. When average people are beaten by life, they stay down. God doesn't want his church to be average. He wants you to stand up, take a stand, and fight back against injustice. Things that are wrong. Things that, 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 will, kill, that will, will kill your dreams. You know, E.E. Um, e. Cummings, the American... Uh, poet said this he said to be a nobody but yourself in the world that is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle any human being can fight and never stop fighting the enemy will come with doubt he will come with criticism and exaggeration and try and squeeze you into a mode like Romans chapter 12 says, where you are just like everybody else, but you've got to fight back. It tells us that the stones were bent. Bent stones are very interesting. When a, when, 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 uh, a stone gets bent by fire, or when stones get bent by fire, it can look terrible, pitch black. And if you look at it on the surface, you think, what's the point? Let, let me get a new stone. But the layer of suit, it's very thin. If you just put a bit of effort in it, you can actually clean it off. And underneath, it is huge potential. And, and, and some of you listening to me today, you are burned stones. Things have gone wrong in your life. Please don't look at yourself and look at the suit. Because the suit is only a layer that can be cleansed away by the blood of Jesus. Underneath is, 
it's, it's a solid building block that can be used for the glory of God. And the enemy will exaggerate how dirty and how bad and how many heaps of rubble and, and look how black you, you, you are. No one will ever use you, but God can cleanse you. Do you know what? You can get bent and clean and get bent and clean and you are still a good stone and you can build a solid wall. Another thing about bent stones is this. If you don't uh, allow leaders to take hold of your life and build you into the church and you just attend whenever you like and you flow from church to church you need to place yourself under leaders who can preach to you and help you clean yourself off and build you into something solid but if you don't do that you will stay a bent stone what happens with a bent stone is that because there is soot on, on them when you put them on the wall and you put cement on them it doesn't stick you can't be built into people you can't be built into church you can't be built into a good relationship into a marriage as soon as trouble comes you are gone and god wants to clean off the suit he doesn't want to he doesn't want you to doubt he doesn't want you to listen to the criticism he doesn't want you to listen to the exaggerations he wants you to know he wants you to know you you stand up and fight and and you could be built back into an amazing wall suit also speaks of something that uh can't uh stick at it it also speaks of something that can't stick at it don't be a person who can't stick at things i went to church and they they asked me for money all the time i wasn't in church and no one called me you are like a bent stone you are not going to be able to stick at anything because you've you've been you've been bent it's time uh, you come in and place yourself and get rid of uh your your heads let them get cleansed of you and start again and you can become part of something significant but it takes a stand it takes a stand and you've got to fight back so the enemy will exaggerate you make things look bigger than it is but god wants to build your life the next thing is you need to fight back by putting in the work and the effort you need to fight back by putting in the work and the effort they said so we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to have its height for the people had a mind uh, to work verse 6 of chapter 4 it was a full-on commitment it was a full-on commitment and the verse 21 says so we labored in the work and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared the word work keeps coming up all the time God does amazing things when people put in the effort. The truth about life is this. When you are faced with terrible circumstances, the worst thing you can do is to be passive. If someone wants to beat you up, the worst thing you can do is to just stand there and say, okay, go ahead and beat me. No, the best thing you can do is to fight back. You minimize the damage. But if you just stand there, they will assault you. When, when we face difficult circumstances, what we tend to do is to back down, but we must fight back. If you're listening to me today and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to this God I'm talking uh, about, He loves you, He cares about you. He sent His Son Jesus to come and die on the cross of Calvary for you. He has you in mind or He had you in mind and still has you in mind. I want to pray I'm going to I'm going to pray with you I'm going to pray a simple prayer it's your prayer I'm going to give you uh, the words and you are the heart to it and I want to encourage you to do that then do it sincerely from your heart don't postpone it do it today don't say I'm going to do it tomorrow do it today pray this simple prayer with me say father today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior Jesus forgive me of my sins I believe with all my heart that you died for me and it rose again and with my mouth i confess your lordship over my life 
change me make me your own fill me with your holy spirit and help me live for you all the days of my life in jesus name amen if you pray this simple prayer once you know you are born again you are saved you are now a child of god welcome into god's family welcome into the kingdom of god heaven is rejoicing because of you listen you've made a very important decision and this will impact the rest of your life I want to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this broadcast and I trust that you've been uh, enriched and impacted by today's message and I look forward to coming your way next time but I want you to always remember that if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Live it by God's word. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollards Hill Library, CR4 1LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.